Hello friends, this is lesson 18 and here we are going to talk about the types of supervised machine learning as we discussed in previous lectures. So in this lecture we are going to talk about NIVIS classification model and then uh, some concepts over there like tokenization and vectorization. Then we are going to talk about the classification metrics. Then we will provide some examples for them. Now let's start with the first topic. So NIVIS classification. NIVIS models are a group of extremely fast and simple classification algorithms that are often suitable for very high dimensional data sets. So from this definition you can easily understand that NIVIS classification models are used and they are extremely fast. First thing, they are extremely fast. The second thing, they are simple classification models or algorithms we can say. And another one, they are recommended to use or suitable for high dimensional data sets. High dimensional data sets means if we have more number of columns or dimensions. In a data set, for example, if we have like thousands of columns or we have hundreds of columns, so for that, it is recommended to use now, okay, NIVIS models because they are extremely fast and they are simple also and they are suitable for high dimensional data sets. It is a probabilistic classification and supervised model. So from here you can easily understand that it is a supervised model. Supervised means they need label data. They need label data. And based on these label data, they are predicting the response value. And the response value is also discrete response value if you remember. Next point is it is based on bias theorem if you remember. Bias theorem we discussed in previous uh, lectures and probabilities if you remember and conditional probability. It is based on these two concepts. Now the formula here is given probability of labels. Here we said we need label data. So probability of labels given some features is equal to probability of features given labels into probability of labels divided by probability of features. So this if you remember this is called conditional probability. And now to take decision between the two labels if we have two labels and we want to take the decision between what we have to do we have to divide the first label probability of first label given the features on probability of label 2 given features which is equal to probability of features given label 1 into probability of label 1 divided by probability of features given label 2 into probability of label 2. So this is the formula if you want to take decision between two labels. Now let's see what is tokenization and what is vectorization. First tokenization. So the tokenization is nothing but the process of splitting the text into some meaningful pieces. This is called tokenization. If we have a text in the form of maybe document in a form of text we can say string that text or string should be first split it into some meaningful pieces which are called the tokens. The token can be either word or it can be a sentence. So the process of splitting takes into some meaningful pieces, it is called tokenization. And the second thing is vectorization. Vectorization is a process of encoding each and every splitted word. So here we have divided it first or splitted it into some pieces. Now we are numberizing these pieces. We are assigning each and every piece the number. Why? Because if you remember, whenever we are providing the labels to the machine, the machine needs the numbers quantity value, quantitative uh, uh, values. It does not need like qualitative values. If you remember, first we have to convert them into some quantitative ones. Then it is fit to the model. Then the model will predict the output. If you remember dummy variables there, what we did, if we had some ordinal 
qualitative values. So first we had to convert it into some numbers like one, two, three. For example, if we had male and female, we were assigning them numbers like zero, one. If we had some qualification, like if you remember, we had PhD, PhD, master and bachelor, then we were assigning the numbers for them like one, two, three, because these numbers are required whenever we are fitting the model. Otherwise, the qualitative data cannot be fit to the model. So what we are going to do here, after splitting the text into some pieces, we have to encode each and every splitted word into some numbers, which are called the inputs or features, and they are provided for the model. The process is also called as feature extraction. Because from the text, we are extracting some new features and we are assigning the numbers or encoding them and giving them some numbers and do, after that they, they are considered as input or features for the model. So this process is also called as feature extraction. Then since we said NIVIS is a classification model, so we have to apply or use the classification matrix. If you remember classification matrix here, we were using classification accuracy. So here the same we have to calculate the model performance or it is also called the classification accuracy that we have to conduct. And for better understanding the different factors, what we are using, we are using confusion matrix. If you want to know the types of error, type 1, type 2, true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative, precision, sensitivity, all those metrics. So it is required to use confusion metrics and we have to calculate all those metrics. Now let's see here. Okay, NIMBIS classification model, we said it is a probabilistic classification model and it is supervised model. It means it needs some label data. Since it is based on probability, if you remember, this is the, the formula we can say for uh, conditional probability or for naive base classification. Probability of hypothesis given data is equal to probability of data given hypothesis into probability of hypothesis divided by probability of data. So for understanding this formula, we are going to have an example here, then you will better understand this. Let's filter whether the received email is either spam or ham. For doing this, what we are going to do, imagine we have an email with three words. What are those three words? Send cash now. Three words are there. We will use knife based classification model to filter whether this message or this text is spam or a ham. So we have to use probability for both, we have, whether it is spam or whether it is ham. If you want to first find the probability of being the text spam, we have to use this formula. So probability of spam given, uh, given this uh, text in cash now is equal to the probability of the message given spam into probability of spam divided by the same as this formula. And the same way if you want to find whether this message is a ham or not, so for that probability of ham given the message the same as this is equal to probability of message given ham into probability of ham divided by probability of the message. And now friends, we are concerned with the difference of these two numbers, ham and spam. Probability of ham, probability of spam for this message we have to calculate and after that we have to take the decision. How to take the decision based on criteria, what is the criteria here? If the probability of spam given this message, like send me cash now, is larger or greater than the probability of ham giving this message send cash now, then we can classify and say the text is spam. If the probability of ham for this message is greater than the probability of spam, then we can easily say the text is not a spam but a ham. For doing that, let's see here. But before that, let's talk about tokenization and vectorization. Then you will better understand the concept of spam and ham there. 
So we say tokenization is uh, vectorization. It is nothing but also it is called feature extraction. First, we are tokenizing. Tokenizing means the text is split it into some words or pieces. Those pieces are given some numbers or assigned some numbers and that is called vectorization. Okay, what is the input? So this is the input. Any text we can put. Like here I put how to filter the received email is ham or spam. A simple a dummy text is here. It is our feature or input. Now we have to instantiate the vectorization. So count vectorizer, this is the function we have to call here and I am creating um, an object for that. So after that, what I am going to do, I have to fit this message into the object here what we created. And now, and this can be also done in first step at the same like we are uh, fitting and also transforming. But manually also we can do like here first we are fitting the data and then we are transforming here. Then I am going to print the, the vocabulary for that and then we are going to transform it into, transform the data into document matrix or it is also called encoding the text. And then I'm going to print the shape and convert it to array and print the result. Let's see here. Yeah. So this is called tokenization, friends. First, it is split it into words like this. Each and every word. Then they are assigned some numbers like this is number is assigned for this, this is assigned for this, and this is assigned for this. And see, friends, assigning the number is also based on some priority. It is not like simply assigning. It sees which word is so much important, which one is given the first pri priority, the second priority, the third priority, and based on that, it is assigning the numbers. And how many numbers are assigned? It is assigned from 1 to 10. And each and every word is assigned number one. So this is assigned one, one, one for each one because they are not repeated. For example, any word, if it is repeated, for example, if I put here how again, so it means how is repeated twice. So it is showing me here one word is repeated twice. The others are repeated only once. So this is a concept of tokenization and vectorization. Tokenization means first splitting the words into pieces and vectorization, we are encoding the text and assigning some numbers for them. And the result I told you because the, the models need quantitative values, not qualitative values. If it is in the form of text, that cannot be fit to the model. First, it has to be converted to numbers. Now, let's see here the example. I'm going to read the data set from the local directory here. So, I'm printing it here also. So here in this data set, we have the label. The label is ham spam. Ham spam, they are repeated so many times. And here, this is the message. The message can be either a ham or it can be a spam. In total number of observations, what we have here, 5,573 rows are there in two columns we have. Now, let me first find the probability of ham and spam also and I'm going to visualize the data in the form of graph then you will better understand. So the probability of ham, the text being ham in that text, in this email text, in this email text, the probability of being ham is how much? It is 86% or we can say 87%. And the probability of being the text spam is 13%. And some other values are also there. They are neither ham or nor sum. For example, this one, null values are also there. So that's why it is showing you as some other percentages also or some values. And it is shown in the form of in this bar chart. So this is the ham and this one is called the spam and it is shown here the the values for each and every hump now let's see what we have to do first we are going to check whether this send cache now this message is spam or not and also again we have to check whether this one is 
a ham or not so we have to calculate for this one also and for this one also whether the text is ham or the text is spam and for that we calculated the the average or the total being spam is how much 13 percent as we calculated here as we find the probability here the text being spam is how much 13 percent and the text being ham is 87 percent and now we are going to calculate these two these two are already found there but we have to find the probability of these two whether the text is ham or it is spam and for that what we are going to do first i'm going to convert all the text into lowercase and before that i'm going to drop the null values because here if you remember we had some null values here it is making problem for us that is why i'm going to drop that so the null values are dropped then i'm going to convert all to lower cases so i'm using here anonymous function if you remember lambda so this is an anonymous function and i'm converting all the text into the message all the messages in email i'm converting to lowercase it is a predefined function string function if you remember this also we have discussed and string functions <clears throat> so they are all converted to lowercase now what i'm going to do i'm going to check whether the string this string is there in the text or not whether we have this string in the message or not now let's see and uh, the result we check so the result is returning nothing here so we say oh no there is none because we don't have such a text there under this message call send cache now is not there why so the result is we have to tokenize this because it is a sentence we have to consider each and every the probability of each and every word like send cash now then after that we can easily calculate whether it is spam or it is a ham what we have to do for spam being spam the text this one being spam is equal to probability of send being spam probability of cash being spam probability of now being spam so all we have to find and multiply and that is giving us the probability of this text being spam very simple so what we have to do first we have to go to the data set and the data set we check whether the label is spam if the label is spam you return all those values and store it under this spam variable and now i'm creating a for loop in the for loop i'm putting three words send cash and now and this is returning the total number of spams for me now if i find the number of send and divided by the total number of spam and that is giving me the probability of send as a spam because this is the probability of spams and now if i found the, the number of this how many times it is repeated and divided by total number of spams and that is giving me cash being spam now being spam if you remember otherwise you have to refer the probability lecture in our previous lectures then you will understand the probability there so now here is the for loop i have to find each and every word there and then divide it by the total number of spams and that is giving me the probability of each and every word so send send being spam what is the probability okay it is 0.096 percent we can see this one the probability of cash being spam is okay 0.09 and we said probability of now being spam is this much i'm going to print them here but what if we want to find the probability of whole as we said here we have to multiply that each and every probability here probability of send probability of cash probability of now we have to multiply all that so for that <coughs> okay these are the probabilities for each and every one ham uh, sorry probability of sorry where is that it is here so it is a probability of send being spam probability of cash being spam probability of now being spam these are the probabilities now we have to find the total probability for this message 
being spam is equal to this one. We have to multiply each and every one. This one, first value into second value into third value into probability of spam. And probability of spam we found, if you remember here, the total probability of spam is equal to 87 percent. So now it is giving me this is the probability of this text being spam 0 0.0030 or there then 3 2 this is the probability of this now the same procedure we have to apply for the same message being ham the same now we first we have to count the number of hams how many hams are there then that returns the total number of hams and we have to divide each and every this word on this total number and that is giving me the probability of each and every of these words then as as being ham so sent as being ham is this is the probability cash as being ham is this probability and now as being ham is this probability and now i'm printing all these values here and then i'm going to calculate the the text this text being ham into its probability of ham and based on that we have to calculate and put the values one two three values into probability of this ham so probability of ham calculated already here so this is the probability of ham 86 so after calculating so it is returning this value so how many zeros are there around five five zeros are there because e to the power of minus six so it is returning this value for us this one now if you remember if you are comparing two here at the beginning we said here if you are concerned with the difference of these two numbers two numbers we found the probability of this message being spam the probability of this message being ham and then we said if the probability of spam is greater than the probability of ham then we can decide it is spam if the probability of ham is greater than the spam then we say it is ham now based on that what we are going to do here we have to divide it so according to that this is the probability of spam we calculate it here where is that? Yeah, it is here. Overall. That should be divided by this number, which is given here, the probability of being ham. So if you are dividing, easily we can understand that the probability of being spam is greater than the probability of being ham. So we can easily understand that it is not a ham, but it is a spam. So this is the, the result if you are dividing so spam is greater than ham according to that criteria therefore we can classify and say the mass is in cash now is a spam now for calculating other metrics friends we have to create the model and we have to split the data into training and testing data uh, and then after that we have to build a model and fit the data to the model and then we have to calculate the uh, accuracy of the model according to that what i'm going to do from knife based classification models i'm importing multi multinomial in the knife based model so then i am splitting the data into training and test data then i am calling this one uh, count vectorizer because uh, it is in the form of text we have to first split them here see it is in the form of text not the numbers so that's why i'm calling the vectorizer to convert them into pieces and then number them so that is why so here first the data is split into training and testing uh, so this x train x test it is nothing but data frame y train and y test which is response value it is nothing but the uh, series numbers so here this is the input features and these are nothing but the labels and then randomly they will there will be selection from the data and then we are uh, instantiating the vectorizer so here at the same time what i'm going to do learn the vocabulary and create the document matrix here in a single step otherwise if you remember in previous uh, one first we were fitting the model and then we were transforming here both or in the in a single step is done here 
then here it is transform the data the uh, test uh, this one test data and then uh, I'm going to print the shape what is the shape means the size how many rows and how many columns we have created the model here and then I fit the model with the data training data and then we are predicting uh, in giving x value and based on x value we are predicting y value here and let me run this yeah here the number of rows are 1393 columns are there or observations and 7583 columns are there so see friends how many columns are there so many columns so if we have more if the number of columns or more if you remember here we discussed here it is suitable for high dimensional data sets so that is why if the number of columns or more it is better to use naivis models because they are extremely fast so here the data is classified into hams and spams now we have to calculate the classification matrix here you see yeah this is the way so from scikit-learn I am importing here matrix and from that I am calling this function accuracy score this is y test and this is predicted value and this one is returning the model accuracy for me and this is confusion matrix if manually you want to calculate everything for confusion matrix so true negative true positive sorry false positive false negative true positive is equal to this value it will store this value into this one because it is true negative and this one it is true positive it will be stored to this one and this one should be stored uh, in this one false positive and the last this element will be stored in this one and manually then you can calculate true positive true negative accuracy all these things if you remember in previous lectures we have talked about that that you have to calculate so this is the accuracy 98% accuracy is there so the data is classified 98% 99% classification is done so we are happy the classification is correct and not bad and this is the confusion matrix here it is printed friends and this is classification report here also for each and every label it is giving us the accuracy precision sensitivity and also uh, F1 or recall here all uh, recall is given F score is given a number of features supported here the ham ham is okay label one 99% precision recall is 100% so F score if you remember F score is nothing but the the average of these two numbers so the average of these two two into we have to multiply two into this one into this one divided by the sum of these two numbers it is giving us this number of features for that these are the number of features here we can understand now here the spam this is the precision and this is the recall and this is the f score and this is the number of features and here this is accuracy 99% for the whole number of observations this is the average the average of these two are these two numbers and divided by two it is giving you this number the same way you have to apply for this this is weighted average and weighted average we calculated in previous lectures so this numbers this number should be multiplied with this added this number should be multiplied by this and the whole should be divided by this total number of observations so it will give you 99 percent it is giving you this number it is giving you this number so these are the things what we discussed in this lecture i hope you understood so we talked about naive classification probability and we give some examples and we talked about tokenization vectorization and uh, all these are we provided some examples for each and every one i hope you understood this much